Let me just go ahead and pull this over. So as you guys know, we're doing free uh, Friday night live lighting critiques. Uh, this is a COVID-19 special. Um, we will be doing this for the foreseeable future until, uh, until we, we plan on doing this for the quarantine. Um, we'll be doing this for the next few weeks. Uh, heads up, my wife is nearing the end of a pregnancy, which we are very excited about. And I will be taking a little break once that happens. She's due at the end of July. So and sometimes, you know how these things work. Sometime in July, I will be taking a little time off to um, be with my family. So, um, and then we'll reevaluate and see how everything is from there. But for now, let's get going. So, got a lot of submissions. I'm gonna go ahead and get started here with uh, Nicholas. Let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, hopefully everyone can see that now. Slide my Zoom thing out of the way. Okay, so Nicholas, as you guys know uh, from past submissions, is doing this really brilliant uh, animated piece uh, with this guy in the office, a very cool background. We've got the warm tones of the character popping off. Um, let me stop sharing my video. Yeah, okay. Um, so he's doing some relighting here. So here I'm thinking I relight just this two second clip in a different way. Yeah, that looks really great. Like I said, the one thing is you just want to plug this hole back there. Um, and then I, I think I think this lighting is looking really, really, really strong. So I'm just looping it one last time. Okay, yeah, no, I think this looks really great. Um, I really like the balance of this shot. I really liked how the, the chest is a little bit darker so we can focus up on the face. I love the specularity in the hair. I think the eyes are in a good place. The dings are looking are looking pretty good. Maybe just like nudge them over just a little bit if you really feel like tinkering around with it. And then again, yeah, just this bright spot there in the background, just plug that in and you are good to go. Um, so for the alter alternative lighting, let's go and take a look at this. Yeah. You know, first off, my, my gut instinct is that I think it's looking really nice. The one thing that I think that we're missing is a little bit of the specularity on the screen right side of his face. Uh, the ears are a little bit drawing, a, like I would take down the subsurface a little bit and just kind of limit it to maybe right around the edge here and right around the, like you can see kind of how it's it's a little bit more limited to the thin parts of the ear, you know, because on the edge, it, the skin gets a little thicker. Um, so I would maybe limit that down, uh, soften the eye dings, widen those up, and maybe wrap this light a little bit more over his shoulder here. But But the tone is perfect. The um, maybe a little more bright brightness on this rim on the key coming around the top of them, and then maybe hitting up a little more here. But the tone is right, the color palette is right, everything's kind of falling into place really well. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think this is where you're at your strongest, Nicholas. Um, seeing from the knitted monster and this stuff is like you once you get an understanding of a character, you can really do a deep dive on them. And I've noticed that if you know, once you kind of get into it and uh, you can explore it a little more deeply, you can do some really off the wall aesthetics with it and kind of go crazy. But, but yeah, I think, I think, the, I think you're heading in the right direction. So I would highly encourage you to keep going with this. So let's see. So yeah, very cool. So yeah, it's, uh, it's totally animated. Um, but he, I, Nicholas, did you animate this? I don't think you did, right? You can go ahead and throw that in the chat window if you're still here. Um, okay, good, e good evening, Leon and Michael. Uh, hi, Dana. All right, so let's get into it. So we have, uh, for those that are here, um, so Fran I saw first, so I want to get into it with, uh, with hers. All right. So we have, uh, so Fran, you are, uh, a photographer that's looking to make the transition over to CG. Uh, I know a thing or two about that myself. I've done that in a past life. Um, very cool stuff. The best part about CG is that, well, there's two really great parts compared to photography is that you no longer have to worry about hauling a bunch of equipment around. Uh, you can usually do it on like a laptop or a small computer and, um, and you can play with the physics of light, which is very, very cool. You can break, you can break rules much, much more often. So I want to take a look. You've got a couple of reference points here. And um, 
really beautiful stuff. This one's a little bit more silhouetted, but I really like that we're seeing some specular highlights on the, the uh, railings uh, coming down the stairs. We've got the light glowy background. Same thing here, very similar. This one's a little more muted. So uh, the contrast level is a little bit less. But we're seeing more of the character here and uh, the, the background's a little bit less bright. So you can really kind of push it in two directions. Um, the one thing is this one gets really dark uh, up around this area where both of the reference points, you really can see into uh, the kind of the entirety of the room a little bit because as this bright light's coming in, it doesn't just like fly in and die. It comes in and just scatters in all directions and really will fill in some of these values. Now you're getting some nice uh, specular hits coming down the railing here, a little bit on the stairs, which looks really nice, a little bit up the stairs here, but you really wanna push this bounce light into the space and really, um, and really kind of amp that up a little bit, like really create some shaping on this column over here and, um, and really, really uh, just kind of push that stuff. Oh, to answer the question from Leon, uh, no, that was uh, uh, Nick collaborating, uh, Nicholas collaborating with an animator from before. Okay, so in terms of the character lighting, um, it's a, it kind of depends on what you're going for between these two reference points, right? Um, this is, so normally in shots like this, um, this is kind of an establishing the environment and then we get more into the character so like this will establish this character and then the next shots will be the like dialogue with this character. And in, in your example, uh, this is kind of the only opportunity um, we have at getting to know this guy. So I would like to see a little more light wrap, a little bit more, um, sorry, not this one, a little more like this reference where we're seeing a little bit more of the face, um, a little bit more light kind of wrapping around and really playing up the light bouncing up on him this way. So more shaping around the top, um, you know, the way Nicholas was doing it in his example, the ears will, will get a glowy orange, like a warm hue back there. And then just a lot more specularity on, on the, the wings and, and, and everything like that. And then just push some more light up in here. So that would be my big advice uh, for you for, the, for this iteration. Um, and then, yeah, try and get some of the warm hues because the warm hues in the face will help separate it from the surroundings. And, um, uh, the, it, it is, I'm sorry, will se help separate the face from the body and the hat and all the other body parts. So you just kind of want to create some hue differences within there too. But I think that uh, it's a fun project to, to learn CG if you've been doing uh, photography this whole time. So I think that's, that's um, a, really cool, uh, a really cool challenge for yourself. Um, let's see, uh, in terms of, we, I see uh, Leon is here. So let's go ahead and hop over and Leon. Okay, so we've got a couple ref like this is newer reference, I think. Um, and just looking back at this one, um, my first gut instinct when I look at this is the background feels a little bit low res to me. It feels like this is, uh, uh, it feels like it's stretched out. I feel some like pixelation in there. It feels like it feels a little bit like a um, a low res JPEG. Um, and then the character's starting to look really nice. I think the values of the character are looking really good. I like the darker chest. I like this shaping up along here. I like the subtlety of the blue light here and um, just kind of creating some shaping on this crag. And I like that. I like this this value. Um, in the bottom here where it's starting to get dark down here towards the base, but there's a little bit of fill value in it here. Where in the background, like all this stuff is kind of going super dark. And in reality, um, the background, the, the dark points in the background would actually be lifted. Additionally, we're kind of seeing a black hole up in here. Um, that's kind of feeling like it's the end of the space a little bit. So I would either put like some sort of sky or just something to indicate an extension of the space back there. Um, bum, bum, bum. I like this warm, cool thing on the face. This side could possibly come down just a touch, but I'm liking the structure that you're starting to build here. And I think that's looking really nice. I like the way this dark shape kind of frames him in. You know what I would almost do? I would almost, cause like this light is kind of hitting all the way over here. I would almost create like a beam of light or something that kind of leads us to him and just darkens all of this area down here and up here or something like that, make it softer so it's not quite that obvious, but like 
really kind of zero this in. And I think that might help out a lot. Uh, the BG is a geo with blur. Yeah, so I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the texture on it. But you're like, this looks nice and detailed. With the detail on this feels much, much bigger. Um, and it feels like, yeah, like the, sc the scale of these feels very different. So maybe it's just a matter of scaling down the texture back there. Um, and, oh, and I also saw that you said that you need to collaborate with animators. If, you're, if you join the not to plug our courses. If you join the uh, Lighting for Animation bundle, we have a collaboration with uh, anim school students. So they'll occasionally send over some of their work and we will, so we'll have some animation for you if that's what you're looking for. Um, but yes, yeah, so, but just watch out for these super darks. So um, let me show you this. I got you on. Because this is kind of what I'm talking about. Is as things go back into space, let's see if I can find a quick reference. Um, oh. So as things go back into space, you'll see they'll get um, less contrasty, less detailed, and the dark values really get lifted, like something like this. Like with this dark value is much more lifted than what we see back there. Same thing here. And so what we're seeing on yours is, is kind of the opposite, where this is actually getting darker than this. And we want to flip that, because then it just it throws off the scale a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think I think you're I think you've made some nice progress from the last iteration. I'd like to see I'd like to see it keep going. So we have let's see what's the day today. Twelfth. We're not even halfway through the month yet, and I think you can um, yeah. I think you got a I think you got a good thing coming here. Let's see. I lost my phone. All right. Um. Let's see who else is on here. I'll check it out. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. My pleasure. Um. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Dana's here. Dana, we are going to go ahead and take a look at yours. So we've got uh, Sir Rotundus, uh, Desmondus Rotundus. I'm, I pronounce his name differently every single time, I swear. I, I got to figure it out. <laughs> Let's see. So we've got your uh, uh, this render here. We've got this with the, the, the volumetric light coming through. And then you provided just uh, some examples of the volumetric light and then just an overall kind of a haze glow. Um, and the first thing that I'm seeing, uh, out of this is just like a little bit of, um, well, first off is, isn't there some fur on his face? If I'm not crazy, I think we might be missing some fur. He looks a little bald here. Maybe I'm crazy. Let's see. Anyway. Um, but the biggest thing is we maybe don't want the light wrapping around his face quite this much because from the ear down here to the side, it's, it's starting to become one value. I would like for it to kind of hit some light and dark shapes. And then, and then also because the light is coming in from behind, kind of play up the subsurface scattering behind the ear too. So there's just some a uh, little bit of glows that come in there. This uh, specularity on the wings starting to look really nice. Um, like in the glow here on the jewel, we kind of talked about that. I would bring up the inner value of that because it's looking a little bit dark. Um, love, again, these color spills that you're getting across the scene. I think that's, that's a, really special, um, a really special one. Watch out for this super hot rim wrap light kind of coming around the edge here. Um, oh, you don't think the fur is rendering for an unknown reason? Eh, if it's not rendering, it's not rendering. We can, we can work with it from there. I won't, I won't like fault anybody for that. Um, it also looks like, I'm just realizing this now, it also looks like we're missing some contact shadow from him onto the ground. Man, that was a terrible circle. Try that again. So down here, his his shadow being cast from the ground would really help kind of darken down there and, and ground that area. Um, and then yeah, maybe just toning down this, make it just making it darker. Um, and then really like I like the colorfulness of the, and again, we're hitting it with the diffuse values, but just try and get some specularity in there as well. And then I like the the darkening as we're going across from here down to here in the background. You might be able to push it a little bit darker, but I like the way that you're going. Um, in terms of this scat light, I think it's, I think uh, this volumetric light, I think it's working pretty well. I would tone it down. I would also soften it just specifically in this area because it's a little, like it's a little literal in the lines. They're a little too crisp and perfect. So it would be just because glass has a thickness to it and light gets scattered as it passes through um, uh, that. And then, Oh, and then the other thing I wanted to mention too, 
was just make sure that there's a, a bump on this brick. It looks a little bit flat. And I think that could really help you add some texture. And then if there's any sort of texture you can add into um, the ceiling as well. If you, just like a subtle something might help that out a lot too. But, uh, but yeah, I think, I think you're really making progress on this. The biggest one would just be getting uh, um, a little less light on his, like direct light on his face. Like I'm talking like just twist it around just slightly so you start to get some more shadows in there and then really kind of crank up behind the ear. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba. All right. That's been good. Yeah, for this, um, you just like, because this is looking pretty even in its illumination, uh, I would try and tone it down or maybe like scale it in a little bit so it's like, it's more of like a focused light coming in. Through. It feels it feels more strongly like it's A, coming in through the window and B, wrapping around the character. Because it even looks like it's like coming up underneath his uh, cape there. So you really want it to feel like it's uh, light rays breaking in through the window. And yeah, so like this, this softness up here is looking pretty good. It's just down here, it's looking pretty sharp. All right, let me just do a quick check. Hi, Michelle is here. Let's see, we got some other things going on. Yeah. Okay, Michelle. Let's see. All right, so you rendered this in Unreal. Um, very cool stuff. I'm very excited about what Unreal can do. Um, my first, there's, there's a couple of uh, first thoughts about this. And again, I probably should just pull this one up for good aerial perspective because I really like the way that you're subtly stepping this back in the space a little bit. I think that's looking really, really nice. It's, it's really, really successful. Um, these darks in the foreground are like, it's a right idea, but it's a little bit too dark. I would just like add a little bit more of this because because it's kind of the unifying element to this image is this like soft blue haze diffuse and it would just be nice to get a little bit in this area in here. Um, I would, if you could, and I don't know if the geometry supports this, I would mess with the aspect ratio a little bit. Um, right now it's a little bit uh, blocky, like it's, you know, this is a, uh, so this is a 1920 by like 10, like 11 something. So it's a little bit more square than um, than I than you usually see landscape stuff. I would expect it to be a little bit a little bit bigger. Um, the other thing that's really interesting about it is just how like like vertical everything is. It's like very straight up and down. It's almost like a two, it's like a flatter perspective, um, and I think it's kind of cool. The, the area, yeah. So the areas that I would so everything about this background is looking is looking really nice. Um, the only things that I would do back there would be add more signs of life to the city, more lights in the windows, maybe some uh, dots of light to refer reference some cars on the street, uh, something to just like, it, cause it, it feels a little bit like a dead city right now. Uh, and just, just add some more little snippets of life for the foreground. Like I said, blue haze in these trees, uh, this bulb, I would almost, I would almost take it away, to be honest with you, because it's not really serving anything. It's not really helping us focus in on anything. And I would almost prefer if it was just like this, this uh, worldly landscape thing, because it's, it's kind of like, I don't know, I, it's just thrown off my scale too. So I would just get rid of it. Um, yeah, I love this little bit. This is a really subtle touch. Um, but as you're coming down here and you start to uh, transition from the blue to the red light, what this does is it's allowing these cooler buildings to kind of separate off a little bit. I don't think it's photoly, I don't think it's photo accurate by any stretch of the imagination, but I do really like the visual element that it's giving us. And so, yeah, I, th I think you're, I think you're doing well. Um, and then wherever you can just keep trying to work in these little bits of, of key light, like maybe in these buildings over here, they could just use a touch of, of that sunlight in there, but really, really strong stuff, really great stuff. Um, okay, so if anybody else is on, uh, if anyone else is here live, I will be glad to go through yours uh, first. Just uh, scream at me either in the chat window or the comments section. Um, but in the meantime, I want to sh shift gears a little bit and talk about a demo reel that was submitted by Till uh, Gearman. So actually, let me take this 
down here, so I'm not sure if you guys can really see this. All right. So it was a uh, former student of ours who's who's working, and he's just updating his real man. I can't really. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at this here. Oh, let's start over. Okay, so away we go, and away we go. Nice title card, I think it's nice and simple. The one thing about it, the kerning is kind of, or actually it's not the kerning, it's the spacing. So there's like a lot of space between here and here, and a lot of space between here and here and here and here. I would just, it's, it's, I don't know why, but it just feels a little odd to me. So I would just, I would just take that down um, and maybe add some more space between, uh, after the colons, just to kind of space it out that way. But I think that's uh, that's pretty much, yeah. It's just I just don't want that to be too distracting. Okay, so your reel starts off well. Um, this is a good first shot. You've got really strong um, objects, like really strong products product shots on here, which I think would work out really well uh, for applying for some commercial gigs. Uh, the one shot that I wasn't too I'd like this. I'm trying to think like this shot's nice because it shows this texture, cool. This next one feels a little flat to me. Like the, I would just maybe consider taking this one out because I don't think it really helps sell anything. This one's nice. Uh, I like this one a lot too. I like the watch stuff. I think this is. I think this is really beautiful. I would almost open with this one. I think that's a really really nice uh, nice shot to do. These are really good too. Um, the one thing about, like this shot is my favorite of the three. I would almost start with this one. And the reason why I like this one so much is the fade off from here to here of the light to dark values. And, um, but, and what we're seeing here is a little bit more sharp contrast and a little bit more of a sharper shadow. So if there's, without that like kind of secondary bounce light filling in that space. But that being said, I still think they're, I still think they're very strong. I think they're working out well. Um, I love the way you did this to demonstrate all the shots that you lit in this. I do think that um, you I'm trying to remember the whole animation, but I do feel like if you go back to the critique, there were um, some more shots. There, there were shots that I thought like this one's good, but there were some shots that I thought you could highlight um, a little bit more. Uh, yeah, like this, a couple things at the end, but like a lot of this stuff at the beginning is really, really strong. Like you did some like overall, like this shot here, like this overall aerial one, um, which I think is nice. But I think, I think you could do a couple more of these. Um, yeah, I think, I think that would be, I think that would be a, a really nice thing because this, this is nice here. Um, I would soften this edge a little bit if you can. Uh, this, this, these I'm not really that crazy about. I don't think these are, I think these are probably the weakest things on your, on your reel, especially this shot. Um, this shot looks nice. So I, I would actually take out these two and add one or two more shots from this. And then you can, you can finish off with, with this shot too. Cause I think this shot looks, looks pretty, pretty good. Um, but yeah, that would be my, my general breakdown of your reel there. And I think, cause I, I do really think you have some strong work and you don't need to uh, beef up your, your demo reel with, with anything that's not your strongest stuff because that's only gonna hurt you. Um, and I think that, yeah, I think you've got enough strong work to, to carry you through. So, so that would be my advice for you there, Till. All right. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of go through uh, some more of these. Let's see. We'll go to uh, Mirko next, because he had a really interesting one of just the, the, this bust of Medusa. And he had some reference here, which I thought was interesting. So the one thing about the reference that isn't coming through other than the blood is um, the value difference between the face and the snakes. So snakes are super dark, super slithery with their specky skin. Face is much more, uh, much brighter um, and able to kind of pop out from there. So 
I think that you can play, I think you can do that same uh, structure um, there and actually kind of, uh, you know, it's like, obviously it's not skin, but you can make this, oh, why is that brown? That is an odd one. Um, I think you can make the, the skin tone much brighter. Um, and then what you can do with the snakes is make their, their base, uh, base color much darker, much more like green and dark. I, I, I don't, because maybe it's, I guess, because you're, you're trying to make these like a sculpt as well. Uh, you know, screw it. Make it darker. Make it face brighter, snakes darker, and really allow like the the serpentininess of their bodies really stand out. Um, and go ahead and when you're hitting those specs, hit them hit them with a little bit of color too. Like that could be a lot of fun too. Like maybe make it a little bit more of like a daytime spec on them, and so it's a little bit bluer. Um, or if you want to keep them all warm, then you can keep it uh, a little bit uh, of a warmer tone as well. I think you can do better than this on the background. I think you can actually go darker. I like that there's a gradient on it, uh, but I think you can go darker to really get the, the foreground to pop off. I love these detail shots because uh, the one really nice thing about the detail shots is that they don't have to match the lighting of the regular one. You can, you can set them up as little vignettes themselves. Like for this one, I think you can create more shaping on the snakes. Uh, and then a lot of these because there's a lot of bright values and there's just not enough opportunity to go darker and you can totally defocus the background on these, these closer up ones, the way that you're doing here, you can do that, um, do that on that first one as well. And same thing here, you can, you can allow, like this isn't really helping us out here. So you can allow that to go out of focus too. Um, yeah, but I, th I think that's, that's the way I would play this one up for you. Uh, and I think, I, cause I think you could um, really do some cool stuff there with that. Uh, Clow, hi, I see you there. Welcome. Let's go ahead and uh, hop over to yours. Yes, very cool stuff. Um, so yours, this is, a, this is an interesting uh, render of this because usually uh, when, when I see these, um, kind of the default of this is to be, you know, very light and very kind of like lots of light bouncing around, lots of glowy on the inside. You've actually taken it a little bit darker. And it's, it's fun because this is, again, it's just different than what we're, we're normally seeing. So I think, all right, let's take a look. Um, this plane, I would almost move it out of the way because it's kind of like right in the middle and it's, uh, it's out of focus uh, because it's closer to the camera. And it's just like, it's kind, of, it's kind of messing up the composition a little bit. So I would take this, slide it up to kind of fill in this dead area over here. And then this, uh, vertical uh, column, I would maybe go over here to kind of fill in this area. And what those will do will help us frame up the, uh, the image a little bit more and allow us to kind of focus in on the center here. Then the next question is like, what is our main area of focus? Like, because you're getting some good shaping overall. But like, what is this, what's the story that we're trying to tell? And I think it has something to do with this globe. So let's kind of frame everything around that a little bit. So push some stuff over here. Um, allow a little bit more light wrap around here on the on the globe. And something that might happen, because this often happens with uh, perfect spheres, is you'll get, uh, you kind of start to see it here, like see this perfect line that's going down. The way that I eliminate that is a process that I call, it's like, I, it's a key and a key wrap light. And the way that it works is you have the main key light that's kind of uh, coming in and hitting kind of like where this is. And let's say that this has a value of one. What I would then do is take that value down to like 0.7 and create a second light that's wrapped around, that comes, that comes wrapped around here a little bit more. So it wraps around the front of this a little bit. I, I turn off the specularities because I don't want two specular highlights. And I take the value and make it about 30% of what the, uh, that main key light is. And the second light, I call it a key wrap because it hits the, because so what it does is allows the more intense key light to create what we're seeing here. But that second light just kind of takes this line and expands it out this way. So it's like a softer transition between the two things. I hope that makes sense. Um, and then for you, uh, watch out for these, these bright highlights in here. I would just kind of like make sure that those are toned down a little bit. I would, 
this is something else with this scene is that uh, this lamp, let's either make it on or let's make it off. Because right now it's kind of living in the in-between world of being on, but not really lighting up the table a lot and not really serving a purpose to the mood or directing the viewer's eye for the shot. So I, for me, I would, I would almost turn this off um, and then allow this globe to get brighter, allow the background to stay dark back here to really kind of focus this bright over dark, get some specularity into this wood here because that's looking a little diffuse and, and, and dark. Watch out for this painting, uh, this print getting too bright and allow that to sit back in the space a little bit more. And then I think, I think you're, you're, you're really onto something. I think you got something really good. Um, I'm looking at the spec here on the ground. It's, a, it's nice. It is a little broad though. It would be nice to kind of pull that in a little bit and make it a little tighter. Um, yeah, I think, I, think that would, I think that would help out a lot. So make the story all about, the, and maybe clear this, this rug away just like, so it's like in here instead. So everything kind of frames up around this globe, but that would be, that would be my thought there. Um, yeah. Oh, hey, hey, Juan Lopez, welcome here. All right. So, all right, let's move on Nico here. Okay, so now we've got Jen. Um, so Jen had this and had it animated. Uh, I think it's looking really, I think it's really cool. Um, the animation was pretty short. So I, I, if you were gonna do that, I would, I, would ex I would recommend that you extend the frame range. You guys can see it in the, in the group channel, but it's basically just the caustic light is kind of, um, is moving in the background. I would recommend putting in some floating particulates. Uh, you can do that in 2D space in the, uh, in like a composite or something to make it feel like it's more underwater. Uh, underwater stuff also has like light rays coming through the ceiling. So, or coming ceiling, coming down from the top of the water. So just like some, uh, some like broken up uh, light rays coming down this way. And then in turn, the, the character, this is a tricky one because I can't tell if the character is self-illuminating or if it's picking up the light. If it's self-illuminating, then I think it's fine. Uh, if it's picking up the light, I would like to see more pronounced rim light on the back from like a top down and allow the underside to get a little bit darker. Um, but if it is self-illuminating, then I guess the only thing I would really want to see is a little bit more of the influence on the surroundings uh, back behind it. Um, you can also vignette this in a little bit more by kind of darkening around the edges and zeroing in. I can hear. And watch out for, there's some sharp shapes back here. I don't know if you can see this, like that. Just like watch out for those and kind of softening those up a little bit. Um, and watch out for these very, very darks in here and back over here, just because underwater scenes are, the way we talked about aerial perspective before, underwater it gets super murky, super super fast, and you wouldn't see those um, very, uh, very dark values in the background there. So that would be my advice for you, Jen. All right. Oh, and you are very welcome, Clow. My pleasure to help out. Um, okay, so we, this popped up, so uh, Debarshi. Uh, good start here. I like the two uh, color, uh, the two light sources. We've got the outside light coming in. We've got the fireplace light coming here. I usually say to make one more dominant than the other. So I think this fireplace is kind of dominating up. The one thing about it overall is I feel like we can get some more, like we can really push some of these, like push the contrast on it overall. kind of into this region here. And whenever I do that, the saturation gets a little, little, little up. So we go ahead and take that back down. Um, and so I think, I think that that would be the biggest, the, the first place that we could, we could go to help this out. Cause like, it looks a little bit too dusty overall. Um, and then, let's take a look here. I love these wrinkles, like these specular highlights hitting those wrinkles on the front of the couch. I think that's looking really nice. I would like to see some more of that here on this, um, maybe especially on these rivets. Um, although this chair is a little old and dingy, I think that you can still hit them up with, uh, with a little bit of spec here and there. 
there's some values in here. The hat, the coat rack, and the boots are all very, very similar in tone. And they also feel, um, because what's happening is we've got blue light coming in and hitting their warm, warm tones, and they're all just kind of getting grayed out a little bit. So I'd like to see, see if we can mock that up just real quick. Um, oh. Blues in there. So what I'd like to see is for them to kind of return a little bit to their hero colors in here. Um, so that, because right now they're just not feeling like the things that they are. Yeah, so something Kind of like that for those guys in there. Um, and maybe even on this chair too. I mean, maybe just like overall this light can uh, can come down in coolness a little bit. Because I think, I think it may be hurting us more than helping us in some ways. So, uh, like, I, th I think that would be a really nice way to go. And then if you want to emphasize this bulldog, just put a little bit more of um, the warm uh, rim on him there. And even though, I guess, I guess it would be a matter of moving this ottoman over um, and allowing that to kind of shine through, because right now he's sitting in the shadows a little bit. So uh, maybe slide it, I don't know, somewhere else so that that light can come through, get a nice, like, little rim on the bulldog and the bowl if you really want. Uh, but to look back to where we started, where's it is here? Yeah, I think that would be a really nice way to go for you. All right, clever. Cool stuff. So this is another uh, Unreal. So again, for those that don't know, who haven't seen the amazing presentation yet, um, it's, uh, it's all real-time lighting. So this is like a video game. So you can move around in this space. It's very cool stuff. All right, so we got two different, um, the lighting on the characters this, this is similar between these two, but just like the two different light sources um, coming in from behind. Um, still keep, keep pushing a darker diffuse on the ears and light shining through. So there's like that red uh, subsurface scatter go. Loving this spec on that wing. Look at that leatheriness starting to come through. I'm loving it. It's great. Um, I think that this shot is looking really well. These uh, kind of cooler values in here, there's some purples that are creeping in. I'm not quite sure where those are coming from. I would keep, I would keep the color palette of this one on this neutral and this warm and just kind of keep those in there. Now on the character, they're working really well. It's just on the environment, I would neutralize those a little bit. Watch out for this bump here on this rock. It's not looking great. It's looking a little bit big, so maybe tone that down a little bit. Um, but the, my big note was for this other one, and that uh, you can you can't like this moonlight isn't the, as powerful as the last image. I would tone down this. I would tone down all of this value on his on his side, um, and just leave that specularity in there because it's super cool. Maybe tone down the cane a little bit on the specularity and really allow this light to drive the lighting on the scene. Um, the fire might be a little bit too red. I think you can pull some of the red out of just the fire, maybe a little more yellow in there. By the way, as I was doing that, I noticed that this background got a little more green in it. I think that's kind of cool, actually. So you may want to play around with that. Uh, maybe some uh, greens and oranges bouncing together that way. But really allow, yeah, really allow this to kind of sell the scene. And then try and get this leather. Now, see, you've made a mistake. You've made a super cool leatheriness. Now I want to see it everywhere. I want to see it in the other wing, too. Man, you are, oh, there's a term for that. Uh, basically, you hose yourself by, by, doing, it, by doing it too well. Um, so good job there. Okay, so next up I want to talk about, we've got Calabaza Muele. Uh, again, keep, keep pushing this, this specularity on this. I love that, you're, that you guys are going there and you're starting to really get that leathery feel. Um, I think 
that your spec is a little bit too broad. It almost looks like a, a, um, a like a leather sofa versus uh, like like super sleek, uh, shiny, smooth spec. So I think I would just tighten that up and brighten up the specular highlights there. Um, loving the shaping on the face as always. Nose is starting to get a little bit dirty. So just maybe, uh, how do we do that? I guess increase the saturation in the nose there, but then it starts to match the face. Hmm. Take another stab at, at this nose value. I love that you're getting variation in the nostrils um, because that's what we were seeing on that reference. But uh, take another stab at the color of the outside of this and really try and keep, keep maybe pull some of the greens out of it. And the other thing too, was try and fill in just a touch of this eye, the eye white in there. Um, and then I would make sure that this part of his fur is getting darkened too, because that's kind of glowing up. Just make sure that's getting dark in there. So like, it's totally fine that this, that that little bit of the ear is getting bright, but just kind of like, we really want to focus in on right here. Like that's where we want our focus to be. Um, and then, And then we can move around the space uh, to enjoy some other stuff. Maybe just take down this uh, collar on his shirt as well. Very cool stuff. All right. Oh, so Brie, I think we talked about this uh, a little bit in the in the student page, but um, just a few things. I think that we can go uh, a little brighter on and more saturated on the background here. I think there, you can get some more darkness in, in here. Uh, really play up. So again, we can go more and more like that and really play up this underneath lighting, uh, really get some of that warmth and shaping on the hat here. Um, maybe slide this over because he's a little bit off center um, and it'll allow us to kind of plug in this hole of this archway and um, allow just to, just to be a, a, a conversation of, of warm values over cool values. But I think that this one has a lot of potential too. Love the teeth value. Love that they're kind of popping out. And again, I'm encouraging everyone to play around with some of these jewels on his costume. Maybe you can get some kind of glowiness and fun, fun values out of there too. All right. Abishak, so we've got a couple of submissions from you. Uh, and I'll start with this one. So in the theme of the other ones, again, just like we can go brighter. Let's push it. Make that brighter. Um, I think that this is feeling very saturated, orangey golden, um, and it's really standing out and it's really kind of like my attention is because these are kind of murky down here. Everything is being drawn over here to these guys. So I would desaturate those quite a bit and really make this uh, skull the brightest thing because it's also like I'm also getting pulled to these bright shapes over here. Um, and because the skull is so green and all the surroundings are so green, I'm, I'm really picking that up second. Uh, I think that you're getting good value shaping across the skull coming across this way. I think that's working out pretty well. I'm guessing it looks like it's underwater, but I'm not 100% sold it's underwater, mostly because it's like, um, I'm only seeing it in the distortion. Like, I'm trying to think. I guess the distortion would be greater. It depends on how far underwater it is, I guess. And... You know what, and because this is, this is going to be tough, right? Because there wouldn't be this much contrast on it when it's underwater. But I do like the shaping. Um, okay, I would almost just completely eliminate these things because they're, they're more, again, hurting to help than helping. Or maybe just like, I don't know, change their color so they're not so warm. Make this all a, um, a greenish blue palette and then and then figure out a way to make the lighting strike this, like go below the lighting so it really only strikes in this area here and really allows that skull to pop forward if that is in fact the focal point. Um, but yeah, that would be my advice there. And for this one, I think this is looking really nice. The one thing is that there are some flatter areas in this, like specifically I'm seeing um, here down to here. There is a kind of like this haze that's over it, but the value within the building is looking very consistent there. And I'd like to find some ways of breaking that up. Um, 
you know, maybe just some variation, uh, you know, take a look at, at some buildings. You'll see that in this time of day, like as they're, so down here towards the bottom, um, there's more occluding it. There's, there's more buildings. There's, the light doesn't quite reach down there. So from top to bottom, it'll get a little bit darker as we go down. But I really like, I mean, like the detail on this is really nice. Like there's so many uh, little fine details. I think the windows are looking good, which is a real challenge for this um, because it's hard to get them to reflect accurately. Uh, but I do like all of these like small details in here are really, really helping you out quite a bit. So I think, I think you can actually play around with this and do a few renders from this and have a really nice successful image. All right, Stuart, uh, more underwater stuff. I feel like there's another, oh yeah, there's another Stuart over here. Um, so for this, I feel like there's a light source here, but I'm not seeing a light source there. Like if that's the sun, make the sun back there, make it like nice and bright. And that way that our, our focal points can be nice and silhouetted a little bit more. Cause right now, like if I squint my eye at this, the darkest part of this image is the fish and I, my eye kind of want to go there, but I get the feeling like that's not where your main focal point is. Um, and that you'll probably want to focus the audience, focus the audience on, uh, on the, the, the humanoid characters. So I would, um, let's see, I would, I would, I would make a more obvious sun here create some more fall off as we come down here because I'm guessing this is getting closer to the camera. So lighter out here to coming to darker down there, allow um, the, all of this in the middle to become like a nice haze um, from the light and then allow this character to become much more silhouetted um, and then allow the fish to be a framing element for that silhouetted character. And whether or not you want to uh, highlight this, this character as well, so maybe make both of them a little bit more silhouetted. Uh, but that, that would be the structure that I would go for. And then all those fish in the background, just allow them to kind of, uh, you just kind of like, like the way you're doing now where they're just subtly reading uh, off in the distance. Uh, for this one, uh, let's see. So the saturation, it's very, very cyan overall. Um, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm failing to get like an orientation on this. Like, I don't really know. I don't really, I, I mean, I see like a caustic pattern on the character, which makes me feel like they're underwater, but they're contrasting enough where like, there's really no other indications that we're underwater here. There's no like aerial perspective. There's no like, you know, lots of um, fall off as we go back into space. Um, let, me, let me see if I can find some uh, reference here real quick while we're talking about this. So yes, and it's, it's also just like very flat. Like there's not a lot of shaping on this main character as we're going across from left to right. Um, let's see if I can find something here. Give me just one sec. So like a close up of an underwater sculpture. Um, there we go, got one coming in, coming. Okay, so it's kind of small, but you can see that it's like much darker values. We've got more shaping coming across. Uh, and then if the second we go back behind, there's, there's more aerial perspective, more like, you know, less contrast, less detail as it falls back into space this way. And I think that, um, I think that's something that you want to read up, read into because like, let's see if we can find something like your, your other one. Underwater sculpture over sun. All right, so I'm not. Oh, here's a here's a good one here too. So something like this would be really really nice. Where again, like now this has got more top down light. Um, there's some more underwater elements back behind it that indicate that we're underwater. But this one just kind of feels like it's the surface of it. Um, and then this is really nice too because it's uh, the 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 stone is warmer and it's allowing us to separate off from the background. So I think I think that's I, I would like to see you find some reference to uh, build some of this off of. But I think because I think that you've got some, a cool chance to make some uh, interesting lighting. But um, but I think that we just need to dial that in a little bit more. All right. So Hari, we've got a couple of examples, and I'm not quite sure. So this one just says render on it. And I guess this is the composite positive version, but in a lot of ways, I like the raw render better. Um, 
And in the same way of what we were just talking about, like we want some lifted values back in here uh, for this barn and this uh, vertical structure back over there. I want all that to fall back in the atmosphere a little bit. There's, there's some nice to focus here on the foreground. Um, but like, again, I squint my eyes and by squinting my eyes, it would just be a matter of, you know, it's blurring this up essentially. And when I blur it, that's a little too much. When I blur it, like what is the thing that I'm looking at here? And I, it's this right here, right? It's, it's like the hot spot on the ground. And I don't think that's the thing that we want to really be drawing our audience towards. It almost feels like it's this canister is the most important part of the thing. So I would uh, amp up how much light is bouncing out from this and really make that a lot brighter. I would make these this grass darker in here. And again, make this the framing element. Make this the tunnel that we're looking down to really frame up our object there. Um, and in terms of the color palette, like this one just feels dustier, warmer, more sunsetty. Um, there, I mean, there's some value where you can play with some of this, but I think that this is now starting to look a little bit, a little bit too clean. Um, and like, I'm also not really sure what time of day this is because the sky kind of indicates by the lightness towards the bottom uh, that it's more like sunrise, I guess, but there's not enough blue value in there. And so I would just find some reference and really kind of like really work with some reference to dial in the, the color palette. But yeah, darken this foreground, really allow a tunnel, make sure the brightest, the, you know, in, in, a, in a situation like this, the, the thing that's the brightest is going to draw our eye the most and make sure the audience is looking exactly where you want them to look. Oh, this is uh, Jen's reference there. All right, so now we have uh, Juan Martin as our final student. And I said I wanted to keep this under an hour and we are at 9.56 right now. So Juan, I'm very sorry about you being the last one here, but I hope you don't mind. <laughs> um, oh, Stuart, you were here. Hi, thank you. I'm unsure how to get that fog depth uh, effect in Unreal. And to be honest with you, I am unsure as well because I've not used Unreal, but I'm sure there's a way to do it. Uh, you can even do it as a separate pass. So like if you create a separate file and you figure out just a way of getting that depth data, you can layer that in in the composite and do it a different way. Don't, don't always feel like you have to do everything in one render because that, that, um, that won't do you any favors. Okay. So, uh, Juan. Okay, your reference. Nosferatu, great horror film from the 20s. Uh, uh, like one of the original horror movies I talk about. I just did a presentation where I talked about it the other day. I got this mountain thing, so... Let's look at the common elements. So lots of contrast. Um, uh, like there's, Nosferatu is just like a ton of underlighting in this film. <clears throat> and just like a lot of like darkness here and getting the eye to pop out. So for yours, um, I want to see some more, I guess if we're doing this. Yeah, so we got the sun coming, I got the moon coming in here. Uh, I would really like to feel like, it, I'm feeling like it's a nice rim on the hat, but then we're kind of losing it on the body. So I would, I would really like to feel like the moon's coming in this way. For the face, this light is um, uh, not making any sense to me. I would almost like it to be more like, like the sun is, the sun, the moon is coming in striking like maybe a bright patch here on the ground and bouncing up on him a little bit. But I'm not, I don't want to see, I don't want to see like a bright circle here. His skin is also feeling very, very red and saturated to me. So I would just double check that your subsurface scale is right because it just looks like a bunch of backscatter coming through. Um, and same thing with the fur, it looks a little bit blue and, or blue gray-ish, so I'll just check that. Um, and then his body is getting very dark overall. And we wanna really kind of play up um, the leatheriness, the, the specular highlights. Same thing with the hat in here. So where you're getting a nice room on this side, we're kind of losing all shaping as we're going across here. So I would really, I would really push you to find some uh, really good shaping in, in night sequences. Um, night, uh, character, moonlight. So let's see, like, if you look at some examples of uh, characters being lit by moonlight, what did I come upon? Night character, moonlight. Or I guess there's a moon, <laughs> there's a moon night character that's apparently a, uh, a superhero. Okay, night lighting portrait. Let's try that. Um, it's got a lot of good references 
off the top here. So, but I don't want to waste too much time looking looking up references on a screen that you guys can't see. Um, let's pull this one up just for now. I'm not crazy about it, but just as a matter of kind of starting to talk about um, so weird. That's just like popping back and forth. All right. All right. Ah, whatever. Hopefully you guys can see this, but basically, you know, there's some artificial light coming in the front. You know what? Let's not even look at this image. I don't like it, but basically I want to see light coming in here, hitting it on the rim, you know, just getting some fills and bounces in here too, really playing up the specularity. Um, I like the scene that you've created. I just think there's a, there's a, a better way of getting some shaping on the character. Uh, and I would encourage you to look for some lighting. I'm trying to think of some animated films with uh, some really cool um, night lighting. I'll, let me, I'll send, if I can find something, I'll look after this presentation and, uh, and I'll send that over to you. Now, somebody was asking earlier in the comments, uh, and let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen and I'll start sharing my face. Um, okay, so the question came up about, uh, I saw somebody ask something about Katana. Katana is really super powerful. Um, it's a great program, it's a great software, it, cre it, it, it yields great results. I have no problem with people using Katana. Um, I, I, it's just the, the studio that I work at doesn't use it that often and I work on a Mac at home and so Katana is only on Linux and Windows, so I just don't have an opportunity to play with it that much. But I met with the Foundry not so long ago. They're way into it. Um, they're pushing people to learn how to do it, so I encourage you to reach out to them. They've got some learning resources on their website for it. I was excited to learn more about it. I've seen some really beautiful images, and I know major studios that use it um, every single day to make the best animated films around. So it's, it's a very powerful software. Like It, it gets the job done. So. Um, all right. Well, that's all the images that we have for tonight. We've got a crisp, crisp, clean one hour deadline. If you guys have any questions at all, let me know, throw them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. If you're watching this on YouTube, add your uh, notes in the comments. Uh, make sure you check out our Facebook group. There's a link down in the comments below and I will be happy to continue to do this as, uh, as uh, for the time being, again, until my wife goes into labor and then we will reevaluate from there. So enjoy your night. Have a great weekend, everyone, and happy lighting.